Welcome to Inside Berkeley. My name is Tori Mathis and I'll be your host today. Today we're going to be talking about some new things coming up in 2020. First thing is snow emergencies. So today we'll be meeting with Public Safety and Public Works to kind of discuss the new ordinance that had just recently passed. Today I have Chief Kane and how are you today? We're doing very well, Tori. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. So sure. can you kind of talk about what this ordinance is and, and kind of how it'll work? Sure. Uh, the snow emergency ordinance uh, is to be able to get the cars off of the streets so that DPW can plow the streets and we can respond uh, quicker to emergencies. Uh, historically in the city of Berkeley, we've declared snow emergencies under the Uniform Traffic Code that we have adopted through the uh, state of Michigan. However, uh, this ordinance gives really specific directions on what people need to do. I'm a firm believer if, that if people know what to do, they'll do it. So it, it, it tells people, you know, you need to, once you're notified, you need to get your cars off the street until uh, the snow emergency is declared over. Okay, and so that would be the impact on residents, just getting your uh, cars off the street. Exactly, off the public streets and also public parking lots, okay. which uh, is kind of something people don't think about right away, but our DPW is also responsible for uh, plowing uh, public parking lots, and it's really difficult. I know our station, because we're a 27 operation, we'll go out and move our cars for them when they're ready to clear different parts of the lot, but we, they can't do that in public parking lots, so it's a lot easier to clear it when there's no cars there. Definitely, and so you know, you're kind of talking about a little bit on the benefits. How does this uh, ordinance benefit public safety? Well, we have all-wheel drive patrol cars, and our fire apparatus are pretty heavy, and we carry a bunch of water on them, so it's pretty tough to get them stuck in the snow. But for emergencies, you know, we don't want to be sliding. We don't want uh, snow to be in our way. So the quicker we can get the cars off the street, the quicker the DPW can plow the streets and parking lots, the quicker we can respond to emergencies also. So Chief, can you kind of talk to us about how the process will work uh, in terms of alerting our residents or outside communities about a snow emergency? Sure, what'll happen is uh, we'll work closely with uh, DPW and also with, with uh, City Hall. Um, and basically it's, it's driven by DPW. If they think they need the streets cleared to, to do their job, uh, we'll, we'll declare a snow emergency. What we'll do is we'll get a hold of you because we're counting on you to get the <laughs> word out through social media, through email blasts, through uh, press releases to the, to the media. I know we notify Homeland Security. They're always interested. Oakland County Homeland Security is always interested and they publicize that also. Great. So there's a lot of ways we, we try to get the word out. We want everybody to know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, once that happens, you know, we will try to give it much advance notice. You know, we like to give a couple hours uh, notice to people also. So once that happens, we'll declare a time it starts and then the snow emergency is in effect and you'll need to get the cars off the streets and public parking lots. Um, and I guess same process would work say, uh, when a uh, snow emergency would be over as we would just wait for an announcement uh, and then we'd push out from there? Exactly. And, and our goal is to get uh, to get that info out as best we can. Um, you know, I, I know, you know, if I think something's coming up, I, I go out and look for it. We would hope that people, if they're if they're not positive, you know, don't wait. You know, we'll get it out as soon as possible. For sure. And for residents listening out there, that being said, with this new ordinance that's coming through, make sure you're following the city of Berkeley's social sites as well as the uh, public safety sites, as well as our website, and then our you know signing up for our email newsletter. We'll make sure to push everything out uh, in regards to snow emergencies as well as any other alerts that we need to let residents know about. Um, and then just last question, Chief, you know, I, I, something in the ordinance that was mentioned, and I know residents out there probably have questions about, you know, if by chance, you know, their car happens to get towed and, and what that looks like uh, when it comes to a snow emergency. Sure. Well, the goal of the ordinance is to clear the streets so that DPW can plow the streets so we can improve safety for everyone. So our goal, we would love not to write any tickets at all. We would love to see no cars in the street, no cars in the municipal lots. Um, typically, what we've done in the past, we plan on, on continuing is, if, if there's a car in the street, we will try to get a hold of an owner if we can. You know, if we have 500 cars in the street, it's gonna be a little difficult. If we have five, we could probably do that. But we'll try to get a hold of an owner, um, knock on doors, and try to get the cars out of the street. Um, so. You know, will we write tickets in order to gain compliance? If we have to, we will, but that's not our goal. This is not a, this is about safety. It's not about re generating revenue. As far as impounding vehicles go, uh, my two winners here, we we haven't impounded a car yet. Um, typically, we can get them moved. You know, if, if uh, DPW needs a car moved in order to get their job done, we will impound it, you know, but, but that's not our goal. But we have to have the streets cleaned 
and cleared. So that's that's what we're looking to do. Yeah, understandable. It's a safety concern. So exactly, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you coming and sitting down with us and you know talking to talking to residents about what what's coming up and you know just definitely to be ready for the upcoming snow blizzards that we'll probably have from Michigan. Unfortunately, we probably <laughs> will. It's it's Michigan in the winter. Yes, for sure. Um, well, we'll be right back and we'll be discussing with Public Works on you know their plowing process and how this uh, relates to them. Inside Berkeley. Earlier in the segment, I had Chief Kane from Public Safety talk about the benefits of a snow emergency ordinance and how it affects public safety. Now I have the Director of Public Works, Derek Schuler, with me to talk about the benefits of uh, the ordinance for Public Works. How are you doing today, Derek? I'm great, Tori. Thank you. All right, cool. So can you kind of talk about it, um, Public Works, and how this ordinance affects them? Sure, sure. So for our department, this ordinance is very important because uh, it allows us to get the streets cleaned as quickly as possible uh, after a snow event. So the snow emergency, signaling the snow emergency is that time when we absolutely have to get the cars off the street. We certainly encourage folks to, to move cars off the street anytime there's snow, but during a snow emergency, it's absolutely critical that those cars be moved in a, in a quick fashion. For sure, and you know, kind of bridging over into the plowing process, what kind of materials do you use and why do you use those materials? Sure, so there's really two components to winter maintenance from our end. There's plowing, which we do when we get several inches of snow, and then there's applying rock salt, which we do anytime there's concerns with ice. So those are the primary two components. And we also do um, what's called pre-wetting, which is where we take salt brine, liquid, and we actually spray the rock salt as it leaves the truck. So what this does is it helps to get the salt activated sooner than if you were just putting down dry rock salt. It helps to melt the roads even faster. So we've been doing that now for a couple of years as well. Wow, that's so interesting. Didn't realize there was so much science behind uh plowing our streets or salting our streets. Yeah, the technology has really changed in the last few years and more and more communities are using liquid products in addition to traditional solid rock salt. Oh, wow. And can you kind of recap how that relates to when you guys determine salting versus plowing and vice versa? Sure. So plowing, we're looking for several inches of snow and we'll plow certain streets before other streets, majors, and then get into the residential streets. Um, so that's the main component of winter maintenance. And then rock salt is going to be as needed. It's going to be an icing situation. So when public safety contacts us because the roads are getting slick, or even one of our staff members notices that the roads are getting slick, then we're going to go into de-icing and, and putting down rock salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, you, you touched on that, you know, when exactly roads and how you guys determine what roads you plow first. Um, do you have a way of, you know, I know a lot of questions residents have is like, when exactly you're going to plow my streets? How does that process work? Sure. So from a plowing perspective, we always start with the major streets, the fire routes, uh, streets near schools. Um, those are going to be the priorities when it comes to plowing. And as for salting, it's important to note that we don't salt every street with every event too. Um, salting is based on icing and we're going to it's a demand-based thing. So we're going to keep an eye on the streets when public safety calls or when we notice some issues, then we're going to go ahead and salt. And we don't salt all 50 miles of Berkeley every time. Uh, we're going to focus on the majors. We're going to focus on intersections to try to conserve the salt. It's very expensive for salt. 
we have many miles of road to do. So we use that commodity very efficiently, I guess. So it's important to note that we're not salting every street. Yeah, no, and, the, and you kind of touch upon a, uh, an important point because I think a lot of people wonder, you know, not just in our community, but, you know, anytime they see plow trucks, you know, they're not salting and plowing on the way to their routes, um, which if you could kind of talk about that on how you have designated routes per plower. Sure, so every route has a specific driver and a truck assigned to that route. So they will all uh, group up at Public Works and then they head out to their specific area. So we constantly have trucks coming in and out of the yard and, and we don't salt on the necessarily on the way to their specific routes, number one, because it may have already been addressed and we want to conserve it. But number two, we want to get those drivers to their area as quickly as possible so that all residents see clear streets at about the same time or as close as we can. I think all of that's great, especially, you know, that we're trying to unilaterally tackle the snow emergency as quickly as possible across the entire city, not just like specific areas, um, but also making sure that, you know, emergency services can still get through. Um, you know, obviously, I'm going to ask you the question because I think it's a question that most people have um, that, you know, why is it that we plow the way that we do and it ends up being in you know residents driveways you know can't you send somebody out to take care of it after or you know touch on that topic you know when it comes to how you guys plow and in, in, in the way you plow sure sure and in the plowing exercise it's natural to have uh, the snow in the driveway and and all of us as residents are responsible for clearing that driveway unfortunately there isn't anything we can do okay. about that. So we have 6,400 roughly homes and driveways that we impact, and right. so we can't we can't clear those driveways. But we do take a lot of pride in getting the streets cleared as quickly as possible. And sometimes it takes multiple uh, plowing efforts to clear an event. You know, and a prolonged event can take uh, several hours, and we may actually may be plowing two times. And I know right. that's frustrating for some residents because depending on when they're clearing their driveway and the timing but that's just a natural consequence of us doing what we're doing. We can appreciate that, but unfortunately there isn't much we can do about it. All this information is great, Derek. I think it's also gonna be very beneficial and informal or informational to our residents. Could you just reiterate again uh, why the snow emergency is so, uh, ordinance is so important? It's extremely important for everyone to get their cars off the street uh, during a snow event so that we can plow. Um, this allows us to get the, all the streets done as quick as possible. And one other thing I, I want to point out as well is the boulevard streets. There are some boulevard streets where if somebody is parked on the street that our plow can't get down the street at all. Mm. So not only is it you know, an inconvenience about going around a parked car and having that plowed snow around the car, but it may actually prevent our plow from getting down the street at all, which is a significant situation. So right. it's so important for residents to please uh, move their cars off the streets, specifically during a snow emergency. And quite honestly, anytime you know, there's snow in the forecast, it does allow us to, to get the streets clean quickly and efficiently. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate the both you and Chief uh, coming out and visiting with us and talking to us uh, today. Um, and we look forward to seeing the great work that all of you guys do. Thank you, Tori. Yes. This has been Inside Berkeley, and we'll see you guys next time.